There's just a study that came out showing a new drug called retatrutide looks to be the king of weight loss based on this brand new study published today in the New England Journal of Medicine. Now, in order to understand this new drug, we first have to remember something about Manjaro, aka terzepatide, which is both a GLP-1 agonist and a GIP agonist. And by the way, Manjaro is still so fresh that it is yet to be approved, FDA approved for weight loss. Right now, it's only FDA approved for type 2 diabetes. When Manjaro is given at its highest dose of 15 milligrams, it causes on average a 22% drop in body weight over a 72 week time span. Now this is compared to 15% average weight loss with semaglutide, AKA Ozempic and Wegovy, which is only a GLP-1 agonist, not a GIP agonist. But the company that makes Manjaro, Eli Lilly, has another drug coming soon and it's called Retatrutide that caused patients with obesity to lose on average 24% of their body weight in just 48 weeks. This is the most weight loss seen of any drug. Now, this drug is not just a GLP-1 agonist, but it's also a GIP agonist. And wait for it, it's also a glucagon agonist. That's right, it's actually mimicking three different hormones in the body, and that's why it's being called triple G. Now, in this mid-stage trial that was published in the New England Journal of Medicine, there were over 300 obese patients with a BMI, a body mass index of at least 30. In addition to the 24% average weight loss on the highest dose, there was a, about a 58 pound weight loss over 11 months. So basically when you average out the numbers, it came out to about 58 pounds of weight loss over that 48 week time span. And if they kept that trial going beyond the 48 weeks, they most likely would have lost even more weight. So now Eli Lilly, they're recruiting for a phase three trial for this drug. So it's not like this drug is gonna be available anytime soon. It's so fresh that it doesn't even have a brand name yet. Now this medicine did more than just weight loss. It also lowered blood pressure and some patients were able to stop taking their blood pressure medication. Most of the patients who had prediabetes had reached normal blood sugar levels by the end of the study. The side effects are more or less the same as the other GLP-1 agonist drugs, meaning nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, constipation, which these side effects did get worse at the higher doses. And by the way, that's why we start at lower doses to allow the body to get accustomed to these drugs in order to minimize the, the potential for side effects. There were some less common side effects uh, that were pretty notable in this study, like 7% of the patients on this drug did experience skin tingling, what we call hypersthesias, compared with 1% who were getting the placebo. One person in this study out of those 300 something people developed acute pancreatitis, meaning inflammation of the pancreas. There were increases in the heart rate uh, that was seen up until the 24 week mark in most patients. Uh, and then that rate declined as you got closer and closer to 48 week so basically we went kind of like up and then 24 and then 24 to 48 went down again now in related news there is another weight loss drug that is coming out soon that is also made by eli Lilly that comes in the pill form and it causes the same amount of weight loss as we go 15 percent on average actually there are three pill forms of these glp1 agonist drugs coming out one of them is from eli Lilly. Another one is from Novo Nordisk, that's who makes Ozempic and Wegovy. And then there's a third pill version that's coming from Pfizer. Oh, I just wanna add one more thing about this new drug that we're talking about. There is another set of results suggesting that it looks to have promise in treating non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, AKA fatty liver disease, which is a condition in which excess fat builds up in the liver, which can eventually lead to cirrhosis. About one in four Americans have fatty liver disease and many of them don't even know it. And this isn't really surprising that these drugs improve or even reverse fatty liver disease because fatty liver disease is really a consequence of high insulin resistance. And many health issues are consequences of high insulin resistance. You could even lump blood pressure in there, heart disease, whether that's stroke and heart attack. Type 2 diabetes is an issue of insulin resistance and throw in fatty liver disease and actually many other chronic illnesses, even many cancers. There's 13 obesity related cancers, for example, that are highly correlated with insulin resistance. Even PCOS in women is correlated with insulin resistance. Uh, Alzheimer's is another one. So a lot of things 
stem from insulin resistance. And when you improve or you fix that insulin resistance, all of these other things get better that are tied to insulin resistance. Oh yeah, if you wanna know the single most important lab to check in order to determine your level of insulin resistance, check out this video right here.